Hey there, what is going on? It is Rob from Crypto Bobby. And today, after all the craziness, after everything that's gone on the past week, two weeks, there's finally some potentially positive news and a positive market reaction over the past four or five hours or so. Some things have finally gotten settled, it looks like. And while a lot of it has already kind of been priced in and the action has moved down, we're finally seeing a little bit of a recovery and potentially saw a bottom on Bitcoin and bottom on crypto. Who knows if that'll last or if we're kind of in the middle of a little bit of a bull trap potentially. But looks like for right now, some pretty positive news, positive reaction from a lot of traders and investors. So let's talk about why that happened, what the hell is going on in case you don't have a full, you know, in case you don't have 40 hours a week to sit here, 80 hours a week to sit here and watch these charts and watch Twitter and watch the news and see what's going on because this market is crazy. It is about as, you know, it has like four different personalities that, that go through every day. So let's talk about that. If you are new to the channel, definitely hit the subscribe button. I do daily recorded videos and then I also hop in to the YouTube live maybe two, three, four times a week uh, on Crypto Happy Hour just to talk to you guys, have a couple different drinks, share what I'm thinking about the marketplace and where I think things might potentially be going. But let's hop into it today. So unless you've been sleeping under a rock the past couple of days and specifically yesterday, China has been impacting the market in a, let's call it in a negative manner. So I can pull up, we can look at the last day basically. You can see here, Yesterday was a day in which Bitcoin itself went from about $4,000 to a little about $3,900 all the way down to $3,200. And then that was for the most part due to BTCC, so uh, BTC China having to shut down their Bitcoin uh, and cryptocurrency exchange uh, and pre preparing to do that by September 30th. They were the first exchange in China that came out and said, hey, we're going to shut down. And this was following basically two weeks of rumors in regards to what was happening in China. There was rumors in the articles in Bloomberg. There's articles in the Wall Street Journal saying a shutdown is coming, a shutdown is coming. And some people said this is FUD. Some people said, you know, this might be real. I, for me personally, I thought there were too many rumors for it not to be real. So I kind of started to believe those, those articles after a while. And we can see here today that the price of crypto actually went down to a low of about 30 on the US dollar percentage, about 3,050 around that range, a little, maybe a little bit below or a little bit above that. I actually had a buy order that I just caught at 3075, which was, which was lucky. And then after that, some news came out that provided a little bit more clarification. So first of all, a little bit of news came out, more news. Via BTC became the second as of nine hours ago, so maybe two in the morning or so, uh, East Coast time in the US. Via BTC, another large exchange came out, said they're closing on September 30th, much like uh, BTC China did. So that drove the price down a little bit more. And then again, more bad news, Yunbi, another exchange, another Chinese exchange said they're closing on September 20th. And then some positive news came around, which started driving things up. So Caxon, which I am not pronouncing that right in any, in any stretch, but that is a, a new site in China, which was the original news site that broke this news, uh, probably about two weeks ago at this point in time that China was considering ICO bans and China was, was going to be considering an outright ban of, uh, an outright ban of cryptocurrency exchanges mentioned that OKCoin and Huobi, which are the two largest exchanges in China, I believe OKCoin is number three glo globally, Huobi is number six globally in terms of volume. So they're getting a longer period before closing because they have a large number of users and they also haven't done any like recent listings of ICO tokens. So Huobi and OKCoin are, are getting a longer runway and then more news came out essentially saying they're just going to be stopping OKCoin and Huobi are just going to be stopping uh, CNY to crypto uh, exchange. So the Chinese fiat to crypto is no longer going to be allowed. But to that effect, 
from what I'm understanding and from what I'm hearing, crypto to crypto on OKCoin and Huobi are going to be allowed. So you're not going to be able to take, I believe it's the yuan, you're not going to be able to take that and invest into Bitcoin. But if you already have Bitcoin or other crypto, you can trade between Bitcoin and Ethereum, Bitcoin and Litecoin, whatever. So that was a positive bit of news. And we can take a look here. I mean, from everything yesterday, we've almost recovered all of yesterday's losses. And we still have about 12 hours left in the day. So that's most certainly possible. And looking up the charts right now, this is this is Bitcoin to USD. But we can see here things at around eight o'clock in the morning was really when everything took off. And I will I'll show from a percentage point perspective. In the past four hours or so, Bitcoin has recovered about 24, 24%, which is incredible. I mean, that is a massive, massive run. And I think a lot of that is due to people freaking out. People are freaking out. And there was certainly some market news priced in about OKCoin and about Huobi. And that was my big concern too, was, was yesterday I talked about this, where I said, you know, BTC China isn't going to stop trading for no reason. There's, there's no way a company that ha that does you know, X amount of you know, millions and millions of dollars in volume in China is just going to stop trading for fun and for like their own health and basically surrender the market to its competitors and have them take their volume and take their, their revenue, essentially. So I figured that the other exchanges were going to be shortly following behind. And you saw that with Yunbi, you saw that with, um, you saw that with Via BTC as well. But to that effect, it looks like some things have been spared a little bit with Huobi, a little bit with OKCoin. Now, what is, what's going on from, from here? So if indeed Huobi, OKCoin, and some of these other exchanges can still do crypto to crypto, that, is, that will hopefully be helpful in terms of sustaining this. I think long term, it's you know, Bitcoin, Litecoin are losing a good chunk of volume. For sure, they are losing a lot of people that want to buy into cryptocurrency, specifically Bitcoin uh, and Litecoin as well. So they're losing a big amount of people. What I have heard is a possibility, and what I heard, have heard is is a potential too. Is that these exchanges and specifically Huobi and OKCoin, what some people expect to happen? You know, they're supposed to be stopping trading by October's end, so October thirty first. Two of the country's big three markets. What people, some people expect to happen here is that the Chinese government is going to work directly with Huobi and OKCoin to put in regulations similar to like the New York Bit license that was passed and essentially only allows like two or three companies to really operate in and exchange fiat for cryptocurrency like Coinbase or like, uh, like Coinbase or like and GDAX and Gemini as you know, some of the main, there's very few cryptocurrency exchanges that allow people in the US at least to move United States dollars into Bitcoin or into Litecoin or into Ethereum. There are multiple, multiple exchanges where I can trade Bitcoin for, you know, for Ethereum or Bitcoin for Dogecoin or whatever you want to do. But that doesn't exist right now in China. And that's what some people expect to happen here is that the government is, is somewhat like handpicking the two or three top exchanges so that they can really regulate them and ensure that there are what they would potentially deem proper regulations in place. And they can, you know, whether it's just to track things, whether it's from a taxation purpose, whatever it might be, that they're going to put in some specific strict regulations similar to the New York bit license that will QOB and OK coin will be able to pass, but it might take a little bit of time. That I think is kind of best case scenario, quite frankly, because in that case, citizens of China can still buy Bitcoin eventually. Maybe there's there's a time time period and gap where that regulation is getting sorted out. But I think that would be best case scenario in my in my opinion, is if even if they just have two or three large exchanges in China where they can get fiat into, then that's better than having none. You know, if they have none, I do think that's gonna present an issue long term. And I know a lot of people talk about everything that's banned in China, you know, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Google, YouTube, obviously is part of Google, but but YouTube, uh, Wikipedia, like there's there's a million internet properties, there's a million massive billion dollar companies that are banned in China. But 
I still don't think it's po a positive for cryptocurrency if people in China can't take their fiat and exchange it into Bitcoin or into Litecoin or whatever, you know, into Ethereum or Ripple, whatever the hell they want to exchange it into. So I'm hoping that this is, is and I think that's, you know, somewhat priced in the market here, that I'm hoping that it, this is simply an area in which the government is going to be working with a handpicked number of exchanges and regulating those exchanges and then kind of telling the other ones to pack up and go home or work with these regulations that might be a little bit too stringent for some of these smaller exchanges. And as we're looking here too, I mean, the price is up literally like $50 per Bitcoin uh, since we've had, since we've started this discussion here, I can put up the 15 minute charts as well. I mean, it's been for the most part, pretty impressive green candles here, even in the last 30 minutes going up over a hundred dollars, about $150 in Bitcoin. I'll pull up the ETH charts as well, going back up to about 266, which has been interesting to see for sure. So what does this mean for you? How do you potentially play it? So obviously the past couple of days, there was a lot of instability. I'll pull back up Bitcoin here, a lot of instability in the marketplace. And that, you know, when there's instability in crypto, that tends to shoot the market down. I mean, you can see here, there was a lot of, this was kind of around the, the Chinese ICO garbage that happened. And then we found out China's, okay, China's just banning recently ICO coins, not that big of a deal, whatever. And then we find out that, oh, wait, China's actually banning all cryptocurrency exchanges and nobody's going to be able to buy crypto with Bitcoin or nobody's going to be able to buy Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin with uh, Yuan. That's an issue that brought us all the way down here. And now we're kind of finding out, okay, I mean, look at this massive, massive red candle. Okay, shit isn't as bad as we thought it was. It might not be as bad if we're looking at this four hour candle, like, holy crap, that's nuts in four hours. Maybe life isn't so bad. We're going to be okay. We'll get through this. Hopefully China is, you know, aren't going to totally screw this up, but we'll see. So how am I playing this? What am I doing? Obviously, this goes to show again, you know, buying on the dips is is something that is always, always a positive thing, buying on these red candles. Would I advise against buying, buying right now? Um, I don't know. I mean, we're, you're on a parabolic green candle. So who knows if that is, you know, if that's something, will we quickly go back up to the 5,000 mark that we were at before? It's tough to say. I mean, for me personally, I'm, I'm all the way back in. You know, yesterday I was evaluating things. I set a buy order. I set a pretty large buy order um, at 3075. That actually got picked up barely. And then when I heard the news about, personally, when I heard the news on Twitter that OKCoin OK and uh, Huobi weren't going to be totally shutting down and they might still enable crypto to crypto and they still have a month to get things figured out. I went back in at 34. I kind of exited initially down here a little bit just because I was unsure about the markets, exited about 3,600 and then bought back in at about 34. And now, you know, that's, that's actually been a decent trade so far. So I've been happy about that. That's kind of where, where my mind was, was, was yesterday. I, I took a little bit of, took a little bit of profits and, and took some losses actually in some crypto that I just wasn't super excited about. And I can talk about that here too. So if I pull up my portfolio for you guys, so we'll go to, we'll go to my website here. If you're not familiar with it, always feel free to head on over. It's just Crypto Bobby. Basically, it's just the tools I use in my portfolio. But I updated this yesterday. And so we could see, you, know, you might have noticed I used to have status in my portfolio. I had uh, District OX DNT or District 0X. And then I had OAX, Open, uh, Open ANX Exchange as well. Uh, I actually... Broke about even on DNT, took losses in OAX, and took some pretty heavy losses in Credo. And you know, a lot of that is also just due to taxation. Like I, I wasn't super confident in those cryptos going forward. And I wanted to take a short-term loss to offset some of the gains that might be happening in the future. So I took a loss there and moved that into Bitcoin, moved that, actually moved that into Bitcoin and moved that into Ethereum to you know get ready for this to get ready for this potential rebound. And so far that's happened. So right now I'm pretty consolidated with uh, Ethereum, OMG as well, Civic, Bitcoin, and Manitha. Manitha, I'm a little bit overly concentrated on right now, but that's also something where you can see here about 19% of holdings. I'm waiting for Manitha to 
hit the hit an exchange, whether it's Bittrex or Poloniex or really anything that has decent volume and is, is quite frankly better than Ether Delta. And at that point in time, I'm looking to you know, probably liquidate about half of my Manitha, keep the rest for a long-term play, but take profits on about half the Manitha. It's already up about 100%, close to 100%, at least on an ETH pairing basis. But I'm looking for, you know, hopefully larger gains on that once it hits the exchanges and potentially spikes there and gets some more liquidity from that perspective. So that's kind of how I'm playing things moving forward. And looking at it, I do see somewhat of a consolidation here too into some of the larger coins. That's kind of my thought process from here on out. As, you know, as I look at China, as I look at these charts here and how things might move going forward, what am I looking at? What am I thinking about? With China, basically, you know, China not only removing recently ICO'd coins, I think some governments might actually follow suit with that. Um, hopefully not the U.S. government, but potentially other governments might where, you know, there's more stringent requirements on these exchanges, more regulations. They're basically governments going after these exchanges. And it's easier to go after these exchanges if they have these small cryptos trading that may or may not be securities. So I'm trying to, in some cases, look at my portfolio in general and consolidating within some of these longer term plays and potentially, you know, short, you know, some short term ICO moves from here on out, whether it's Manitha, Black Moon ICO I participated in recently, a couple other ICOs I have on my on the horizon for short term, you know, for short term gains, potentially for short term spikes. And usually what I'll try to do with that ICO is, is I'll try to take a good amount of profit, move that profit back into Bitcoin, move that profit back into Ethereum and let a little bit of that profit ride to a specific point where either I'm, I'm very comfortable with it moving forward or alternatively, I am not as comfortable moving forward and then I'll just kind of ditch it like I did with status at, at pretty recently. So going forward here, this is kind of how my portfolio is structured. It could certainly change, but I feel pretty confident in it as of right now. Uh, if you have any comments, if you have any questions on it, happy to, you know, happy to kind of learn a little bit about what you're thinking, where your portfolio is at. But I hope this video was helpful for you today in understanding why the market crashed a little bit and why we're recovering, because there just has been a little bit more of potentially clarification. There was just no clarification from China. There was no clarification from these exchanges. And yesterday, BTC China really set the market down. And I think a lot of people knew BTC China isn't just doing this for fun. They don't, they're just not just stopping business for fun. Other crypto and other exchanges are going to follow this morning. Young, I, I literally knew going to bed last night. I was like, ah, this is, this isn't going to be great. When I wake up in the morning, things are probably going to be down literally happened, but young B closing essentially you got via BTC closing and then OK coin and Huobi giving a, a longer period to potentially get within regulations. And hopefully, like I said, hopefully China is just enacting similar types of regulations that allow their citizens to buy Bitcoin with Yuan, um, but potentially on just two or three extremely regulated exchanges, which I think would be beneficial for the entire crypto world and still allow Chinese citizens to buy Bitcoin. I'm sure there's going to be ways around it in the future if they really want to. You got VPNs, you have carrier pigeons with USB sticks. I don't know, whatever the hell you want to do. I'm sure people are smart and resourceful. And if you want to buy Bitcoin, you're probably going to be able to buy Bitcoin and you're probably going to be able to figure it out. But it just makes it tough and it reduces adoption. So hopefully China can you know, figure their stuff out. Outside of that, I hope you found today's video and content helpful. My name is Rob from Crypto Bobby. Hit that subscribe button if you are new here. I would really, really appreciate that. Thank you so much for your time. Let me know if you have any questions or comments below. And again, hit that subscribe button. Rob from Crypto Bobby, wishing you best of luck, whether you're buying, if you're trading, if you're holding, selling, whatever it is you're doing, good luck. Have a fantastic day or night wherever you're watching this from. Peace.